Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and this is another video in my electromechanical YouTube sub counter slash clock series, I guess. And uh, look what came in the mail today. Uh, JLCPCB sent me, very kindly sponsored this video, and also sent me these very nice PCBs, which um, these Wi-Fi uh, ESP8266 boards uh, will sit in. And so, uh, we're going to solder this up, but first, uh, let's have a word from our sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at 2 bucks for 5 boards, and only take a few days from start to finish. Step 1. Log into the link in the description. Here you can upload your board files, select options like color, quantity, and even special features uh, for a variety of applications. Step 2. Complete the order process, and if your boards pass validation checks, then they'll immediately begin manufacture upon payment and shipping selection. Step 3. Profit. Here you can see they made 50 prototype boards for me in less than 3 full days. How crazy is that? So make sure to check out JLC PCB, and once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Okay, yeah, so without further ado, uh, let's actually solder one of these up. Okay, so we interrupt this uh, regularly scheduled soldering video, I guess, clip, whatever. Um, I made a stupid little mistake. Um, there's five volts in ground on these top two pins, and I accidentally soldered, well, not soldered, I accidentally designed the board. I swapped them. I must have not been paying attention when I was um, connecting traces to the in the schematic. So unfortunately, um, these are backwards, so what I'm going to do is desolder these two pins, and just solder wires and swap them physically uh, before I solder this guy down onto this board. Unfortunate, I'll fix it in the board files so when I release them it'll be correct, but for this prototype it's unfortunately gonna have to bodge to fix, but it's not the messiest bodge, so we'll get on with that. And here is more or less the finished product and pro product project. <laughs> Not selling these uh, unless if there's a lot of interest. But anyway, um, so I pretty much had this all uh, stacked on this uh, clear acrylic 
uh, frame essentially, which is like a mid-frame assembly with uh, brass standoffs and some M3 uh, screws and uh, nuts to hold everything together. And each module is um, two digits basically, so there are three modules on here. And um, uh, basically, uh, they're all daisy chained together, so they're all getting the same 5 volts, 12 volts ground, and um, a serial uh, RX line between all of them are all shared. And this master will hand out the uh, the commands to each specific address for each display, basically. So in that way, I only need, um, let's see, uh, four pins to drive all three displays. Um, if I can add, uh, currently with the way that I program this, assuming that address one worked, um, I haven't debugged that yet, uh, but theoretically I could have six of these displays, so actually 12 digits since each display is two uh, digits, so I could have a string of uh, twice as long basically. Uh, one thing that I did want to point out, which I'm very happy with, so my logo in large font looks absolutely amazing, I love that, and um, the keep out, I implement a keep out for under the antenna of the uh, the Wi-Fi chip, and that all works perfectly fine. I haven't had an issue with that, so that worked really well. And uh, additionally, um, I actually did a um, my logo as an inverse on the copper plane, and that came out really nice. I love how sharp that is. That that's really good. So I'm going to definitely be using that. I think that looks a, a little more classier than just the silk screen. Uh, so it's a little more subtle, but I really like that. So I know, yeah, um, so other than that, this board came out pretty well. Uh, so I suppose you guys are going to be wanting a demo on it. There are three buttons on board and three LEDs, and I'll explain what they do uh, once the program boots up. So anyway, uh, we're just going to plug in power, and as soon as you do, it clears the display. And it might take a second for it. it's trying to connect to Wi-Fi right now. Uh, the blue light is on solid. Uh, once it starts blinking, it's fully connected. Yeah, it just turned off, so it's fully connected. It starts up in clock mode, and I don't have a real-time clock battery. I soldered wires to it, but I haven't hooked them up to anything, so it automatically will reset to 12 uh, a.m. I use this as the a.m. p.m. indicator. If it's on the bottom, it's uh, a.m. If it's on the top, it's p.m. Uh, I can easily change that to an A or a P, but whatever. It's just a demo. So anyway, yeah, so it starts up in uh, 12, and it'll just sort of go in this mode. The top LED here uh, is, if it's on, it's in time mode. If it's off, it's in uh, subscriber counter mode. The middle LED is actually the inverse of this blue LED, so it'll always be the opposite. So that's basically Wi-Fi status. And the bottom LED is if you're in time set mode. Now, to go into time set mode, you have to press uh, both the bottom buttons. And if you press them simultaneously, the uh, bottom light lights up now. Now it's in time set mode, so I can actually go through. And the bottom button is increment minutes. And then I can increment hours, which is the middle button. So say it's uh, 4... Oh... Uh, 410, fine. Uh, to actually set the time to save it, you uh, press this top button and the bottom light goes off and it goes back to uh, blinking between blue and whatnot. So now it's 411, apparently. So the second's incremented. But yeah, so you can see that this is just the time mode. Um, you can leave this sitting and I only have it updating the digits that change. Uh, so, um, that's to kind of limit the, the noise that this will make. Uh, one thing to note is this is a really cool clock, but I'm not going to leave this by my bedside. This will actually keep me up. Um, it's not that loud, but in an absolutely silent room, I wouldn't want to be trying to sleep next to this. So, unfortunately, this is going to be like a, a desk clock at work or something like that um, in a busy office environment. So, it's not going to be that bad. Anyway, uh, so let's switch into um, subscriber mode instead of the clock mode. So uh, what we're going to do is this top button, if we just click it, oh, just in in incremented to uh, 412, if we click it, it'll clear all the digits. And then now it's looking up my uh, YouTube subscriber count. And once it grabs it, it'll start writing it. And it grabbed it.
So you can see them at uh, 9,401. Uh, so close to making it to 10K. I was hoping to make it by the end of uh, last year, but yeah, definitely um, within a month or so, I'll hit 10K, which is awesome. Uh, so obviously, I can reach uh, 999,999 maximum uh, before this display rolls over. Uh, but that's going to last me for quite a while, so this will be a neat thing to uh, leave on my desk. One thing is I didn't implement um, zero blanking for leading zeros, so it'll always display zeros up here. Uh, that should be easy enough to fix, though, so I can eventually add it so that it clears those and it just displays the total number um, to the right-hand side. But anyway, uh, to go back into time mode, we just click this. The top button again, it clears the display, and then it goes back into time mode. There we go. So we're sitting at uh, 4.13 now, uh, a.m. apparently, which is not the actual time. Um, so what I did end up doing is um, I ordered some more of these um, supercapacitors. This one's 5.5 volts at uh, one and a half farads. I ordered a couple of these, um, ones that are um, basically vertically mounted so that the wires exit the same side. And I'm going to solder them to the red and black wires here and mount them, hide, hide it underneath the board. And the RTC, the real-time clock that I use the chip, actually will trickle charge this. So as long as it's plugged in, it'll charge charge its own uh, battery backup. Uh, so I'm basically going to be end up um, using that, but I'm, I'm going to wait for the other, the thinner ones with the uh, side-mounted leads um, to come in the mail before I... I finished that portion. Now, one thing I've noticed, which is kind of a shame, so let me just unplug this for a second so there's not blinding, bl blinking lights. Um, so, um, you can see the caps stick out a little bit, and the way that this um, controller board's mounted on the back of the main board, um, and there's not a lot of weight on the back. Most of the weight is distributed on the front here. If I just sit it on like a rug or something, it actually seems to hold pretty well. Uh, but I've noticed if you sit it on like a flat table, it tends to want to roll forward. So I'm going to have to print some sort of feet or um, a little stand to keep it upright. But yeah, um, small compromises. But anyway, yeah, I was just hoping that it would just sort of like sit flat like that or maybe at a slight incline. But uh, yeah, I'm going to have to make a little stand thingy for it. Uh, but all in all, I really like like the skeleton look of this, and uh, you can see all the coils and whatnot, and it's pretty clean from the front. Um, you just can see the digits, and that's pretty much it. And I didn't want to choose an obtrusive uh, solder mask color, so I, I went with the uh, classic blue that I use on a lot of my boards. And the controller in the back, I just use green because you're not going to be staring at the back very often, or at all. But anyway, yeah, um, I have a couple things software-wise I still got to fix. Um, I want to try optimizing uh, the the actual controller, that guy right there on these uh, sub sub-assembly boards. I have to optimize some things, um, and main uh, main chip-wise, I want to implement that uh, the clearing the leading zeros, and uh, maybe do some fancy stuff with the Wi-Fi connection. Um, Anyway, other than that, um, I did route out some of the I.O. So if, if I wanted to use this as a general purpose board, including an analog signal, so I could put a temp sensor or something and add some more functionality. Um, but yeah, all in all, this works great. Um, just leave it plugged in. And it's so satisfying the way it clicks. It is kind of a little noisy, as I said, but I think that's part of its charm. You can see it reset to 12 a.m. because I didn't have a battery in there for the battery backup. Anyway, yeah, um, all in all, I want to call this a success. Definitely learned a lot, and uh, this is actually the first project that I've ever used this ESP8266 in, and I'm loving it. There's so many things I want to do in the future with uh, this. I actually bought a number of extras just so I could play around with them in future projects. And the way that this board is designed, it's just a general purpose um, dev board basically because I brought out all the pins I can use this for future projects um, and just solder headers to it and whatnot 
Okay, let's just uh, check my sub count before we go. And um, yeah, just wanted to say a super huge thanks to um, Alpha Zeta. There we go. Super huge thanks to Alpha Zeta for donating these six displays. Um, they're pretty hard to find online. Um, I believe they're the only company that, that still makes them. Um, they make a lot of electromechanical uh, display solutions, which is really cool. It's a shame that um, that they're not you know widely used for stuff like this, like novelty clocks and stuff. Uh, but yeah, super huge thanks for them for donating that and uh, their support. And um, also huge thanks to JLC PCB for providing all these PCBs, including the uh, the different revision, uh, the previous revision of this board, which ended up not working, unfortunately. But yeah, um, definitely they allowed me to experiment and whatnot by providing these free boards. So huge thanks. And uh, yeah, thank you all my viewers, subscribers, all you guys uh, for supporting this channel. I wouldn't have uh, you know made it this far over 9,000 of you guys. So thank you so much. I am super humbled. And um, this was something that I wanted to build for quite a while. And uh, it just sort of happened at the end of last year, which I'm super psyched about. So I want to, I have a lot of uh, dream projects that I want to make, and I just need the time and the money to do that. And so far, uh, this YouTube, YouTube channel and this entire experience has been providing me both of those things. So really thankful for that. Uh, so expect even crazier, bigger projects in the future. But anyway, I'll see you guys.